if you're in your 50s or entering them, if you're a woman in your 40s, woman in your 60s, wish you would have known 30 years ago exactly how to exercise. Well, the problem is we didn't have the research we have now back then, and we did the best we can, but now we got it. So I'm sharing it right here with you, decade by decade for you, for what you wish you would have done or that you could share with the younger women in your life. Here we go. If you're a woman in your 20s right now and you want to optimize your health, not just now, but five years from now, 10, 20, 30, you want to look at being the sexiest and the strongest and the most resilient and the mentally, most mentally tough, get into the weight room. At 25, your muscle mass is peaking. You're going to be able to coast for five years, probably, and have optimal body composition with the least amount of work. But if you want that to last, start right now. Yeah. In your 30s, here's what you'd want to do. You've already started losing lean muscle mass. In this decade, you will lose potentially 3 to 8%. 3% probably if you're lifting weights and eating high protein, getting sleep, and doing the right things to maintain the muscle mass you have. You're going to lose 8 if you're not lifting weights. You're not eating enough protein or period, not eating enough or not sleeping enough. All you have to do is hold on to it. But if you don't have as much lean muscle mass as you want and you wish you had better body composition, lower fat, more muscle, more lean, more tone, the weight room is where a woman in your 40s. You've already started to lose lean muscle mass. If you weren't strength training, you weren't eating high protein, if you weren't sleeping well or prioritizing it, what you need to do is figure out how do I sleep well if you're struggling with that now but you're entering perimenopause if you're not already there. And that means your hormones are gonna start doing this, trending downward, but going on a roller coaster ride and taking you with it. The one of the best ways to help yourself stabilize blood sugar, stabilize hormones, is to get in the weight room, develop more lean muscle mass, start doing a little bit of high intensity interval training, or kick that to the curb for right now, and get walking, get your steps in, and get your sleep in, and take care of that stress level. Hey, I'm Deborah Atkinson, I'm the founder of Flipping 50. I've been in fitness for 41 years, or more, now than when you're seeing this, and I am the founder of Flipping 50, the home of the first and the only exclusively made for menopause fitness membership in the world. Look, a long time ago, I started working with baby boomers not knowing what we were going to find out in our lifetime that there's so little research featuring women available to us that unless we knew to ask when we were 20 30 40 is that program based on research based on women just like me it wasn't most of the research done is done featuring male subjects most of them young athletic peak mid-20s peak of muscle mass Whereas in menopause, midlife, we have hormones that make us much more prone to say being in the peak of our fat storage. It's far easier to lose muscle than gain it. So what makes us think that what's working for those young athletic male subjects is going to work equally well to us? We really can't intuit that. But what we know now, and I started discovering over, over 11 years ago, is there is a way to optimize our hormones, meaning our cortisol and our insulin, which we're always going to deal with, but also to help our levels of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone as they go down, help our muscle, help our bone, and help our brain health. So more on that. Let's jump in and do the rest of the decades. Stick around, and I'll talk to you a little bit more at the end. If you're in your 50s or entering them, 51.3, that's the average age, and listen sister, none of us are average. That's the average age where a woman reaches menopause. That point is where you are in menopause transition and two years prior to it and the two years after it, you have the accelerated risk for loss of muscle and loss of bone. And your injury risk goes up because estrogen levels go down, cortisol correspondingly goes up. None of those things are good. That means less lean muscle mass, at least easier without fighting for it, and more muscle breakdown and more fat storage without fighting against it. The weight room, high intensity interval training, and a lot of steps. Start getting that walking in 
and get your woman in your 60s it's a very good time to be 60 can't tell you how i know that but here's the deal you are at accelerated risk for loss of muscle starting at 60. It increases by one to 2% every year. So no longer is this three to 8% a decade, it's one to 2% every year. Doing the math, that's 10 to 20% in a decade. That's expensive real estate to lose, my friends. Weight room, you're not delicate. Turn around and look behind you at all the things you've done in your life. You are strong and you are about to get stronger. You can probably now do more high intensity interval training than you could when you were in perimenopause because your hormones have stabilized. Now they may flatline, but they're stable and you can count on them and you can increase your ability to get or maintain your lean muscle mass and bone density right now. If you are in your 70s, now's the time if you haven't done it before to get into the weight room and start lifting. We need to lay a foundation and look, here's the deal. Everybody is saying you can reverse bone loss and you can increase lean muscle mass, but it is going to get harder. This decade right now is the time to pay attention. Let's pick it up. Let's speed up. But first, lay a good foundation. We don't want to get injured or ill or exhausted on the way to getting fit because sick, tired, doesn't get fit. So lay a foundation, start with excellent technique, know what that is. Know your limits, check with somebody who can help you, check your technique, look at your limits, and set your criteria for when do I increase and when, if needed, do I decrease temporarily. Questions? Ladies, I'm here for it. So let me know what your questions are, let me know which decade you're in, and let me know if you tag somebody who's a younger or an older woman who also needs to hear this, because you want to grow old with them. So there you have it, a really short synopsis of what to focus on decade by decade and why, based on what's going on hormonally that is impacting our muscle, our bones, and our brain health. And if it affects your muscle, it's affecting our fat, our body composition, composed of our percent of body fat and the amount of skeletal muscle mass that we have really important that if you don't already, you're measuring that, not just jumping on a scale, but you're looking at how much skeletal muscle mass do I have and in relationship to body fat. Not only how much body fat, but where you store it. So at midlife, when we decline in our estrogen levels, we tend to deposit right here around the middle. If you loved this, you love this synopsis, but you'd also like to go deeper and you love to know the why. If you're a science girl, you're after my own heart. Come on over to flipping50.com. You'll see when you land on that homepage what's going on right now and how you can get started and learn a little bit more, whether that's through the Flipping 50 podcast, free on all 80 or more platforms and wherever you get your podcast or blogs and programs where you can get started and feel better during and after menopause.